If you go to Google right now and you type in Zay Flowers, then click on images, I guarantee you nine times out of 10, most of the pictures that you see of him, they will be smiling. He'll be cheesing from ear to ear. He'll have a big grin on his face. Why? Because that's the Zay Flowers that we know. When we're watching him in the games, he's always smiling, always cheesing, always just having a good time. And then even when we had the pleasure of meeting him at the first annual Zay Day this past summer, it was the same exact way he was super super nice and it was genuine too it wasn't like all right let me shake hands with these people take a couple of pictures and then i'm gonna go be me no he was like that while he was taking pictures while he was talking to people while he wasn't taking pictures talking to him, he was the same exact way so he's somebody that we've come to know as ravens fans that's very very positive very very friendly very very happy so when people like that when they get upset you know that it's something that's really, really ticked them off. And that's what it seems is the case with Zay Flowers with the coaching staff. Let's look at the tweet um, that came from. First, it started with the Baltimore Ravens because they said first touchdown of the year for Zay Flowers. They also said tune in to CBS and Paramount Plus. So they had to go ahead and get that out the way so that they could cut the check. But anyway, uh, Sway Misbelief replied to that. And he said, and guess what? We didn't involve him one bit after this. Why? coaching malpractice but it didn't stop there because uh ba replied to that and he said second week in a row that he's had big first halves and they stopped getting him the ball in the second and zay flowers he retweeted that you know how a lot of Twitter accounts, they'll be like, oh, retweets are not an endorsement of it. But in this case, I think that it actually is zay flowers watching that game against the Raiders. Um, like B.A. mentioned, he was heavily involved in the first half. And I remember at halftime, I remember looking at the stats for Zay Flowers. They showed it. It was like five or six catches for like 83 yards, something very, very close to that. And I was looking at those numbers. I said, whoa. I said, that's a lot, especially for a Baltimore Ravens wide receiver. That's a lot of yards to have in the first half of a game. I was like, oh, my goodness. But then second half rolled around, and in the third quarter, Zay Flowers, he caught that touchdown. And shout out to him because he hit the Jacoby Jones dance, he hit the, and he did it perfectly. He did the, the, the celebration perfectly. You could tell he had been watching YouTube videos about that all week because he knew he was scoring. He knew he was getting in the end zone, and he knew he was going to honor Jacoby Jones. So shout out to Zay Flowers for that. But then after that touchdown catch, that was it. We ain't really hear from Zay Flowers after that like at all. And that is a big issue. Now, I'm somebody who has continued to say, like, look, the way that the Baltimore Ravens, the way that they incorporate Zay Flowers into the offense, the way they find plenty of different ways to use him, uh, to, to have him involved, I love it. I love how they do it. It'll be on passes. It'll be on runs. It'll be on jet sweeps, reverses, screens, everything. They will use Zay Flowers heavy. And I do wish that they would do a lot of that same stuff when it comes to Rashad Bateman for getting him involved as well. But when I say that, I don't want them to just completely remove Zay Flowers from the game. I don't want them to completely take out Zay Flowers from the Baltimore Ravens offense. No, 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 no. Especially in games where it's working. It's working. Like, why do we have to try to fix something that's not broken? If somebody's got the hot hand, if somebody's doing their thing, if somebody's continuing to make plays for you, you got to find ways to continue to allow them to make even more plays. In the Baltimore Ravens, they failed to do that. And Zay Flowers, he showed his frustration. Because when Zay Flowers retweeting that, some people may look at that, oh, it's just social media, it's not a big deal, it's nothing. Social media is, they, social media has taken out the middleman for athletes. Because before, the way that things worked, you had to wait to hear an interview uh, to see how an athlete felt about something. You had to wait for that. But nowadays, athletes right after the game too a lot of them got their own podcasts and whatnot i ain't really gonna talk about podcasts because i know what a lot of y'all gonna say because i see what a lot of y'all been saying about a certain baltimore ravens player with a podcast but anyway let that man do his podcast y'all chill out man but anyway the the, the middleman has been removed uh because players right after games 
They can go right to their phones and they can voice whatever their frustrations are, their opinions, whether they like something, whether they dislike something. They can do it straight from their phone, straight from social media, whether it be Twitter, whether it be Instagram, whether it be Facebook. I don't know. No, no players really got Facebook. But anyway, but you get what I mean. They can do that. And that's exactly what Zay Flowers did. Because, see, and, and I think he definitely wanted this to be publicized because he could have saw this and i mean he obviously did see it but he could have saw this and he could have clicked that little like button like oh yeah i like that i agree with that but especially because likes are private now on twitter people can't see what you like but he didn't just like it i mean i don't know if he liked it or not but he retweeted it so he made sure like people knew how he was feeling about the baltimore ravens offense and his lack of usage in the second half and that's significant too because i'm sure a lot of it has to do with losing a lot of it has to do with losing because i wonder what it would have been if the baltimore ravens won that game if they won the game against the raiders would they flowers still have retweeted that it's something that we'll never know because the baltimore ravens lost of course but this goes back to something that we've said for a long time now when you win winning can cover up a lot of stuff it can cover up a whole lot of stuff but when you lose so many of the issues that you have so many of the problems uh, that your team are, is currently facing so many of that gets exposed in a major way and especially in a case like this where the baltimore ravens this was a game that they definitely should have won they could have won they had different opportunities to win the game but they lost bottom line is that they lost now with a flowers specifically with him voicing his frustration there's nothing wrong with being frustrated nothing wrong with being frustrated at all we all get frustrated at different things even when especially when it comes to work we all got things that just really set us off things that's like man why is this happening what is going on with this in one case or another but with him making it public in my opinion that's really really big because you know Harbaugh you know he saw it you know he saw it and i wonder if he's gonna have the hollywood conversation that with with zay flowers that he had with uh hollywood brown where he ended up telling oh, oh take that down because remember hollywood brown's tweet what's the point of having soldiers if you ain't gonna use them what's the point of that if you ain't gonna use them and i wonder how this will impact future games as well what i think is gonna happen um if you thought Zay Flowers was involved in the offense a lot before, <laughs> it's about to go up a lot more now, I think. Because with Lamar Jackson, you know him and Zay Flowers, they boys. They, 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 they are guys. You already know what time it is with that. They both from Broward County down here in South Florida. Um, and they're both great people, so shout out to the both of them. Um, Lamar, he doesn't like his guys not being happy. He's not going to want his guys not being happy. Uh, and you know Lamar, Lamar, he, I'm sure he saw that retweet as well. So I think this is actually going to put an uptick in Zay Flowers and his usage. But what can cure all of this? What, what can fix the issues that are going on with the Baltimore Ravens? What can fix Zay Flowers' frustration with his usage or lack thereof in the second half of these games? A couple different things. One, him being used even more, which I think is definitely going to happen, especially now. I think Lamar, Lamar already looks his way a lot, but now Lamar, like, really, really going to look at him. He can be like, say, I got you. Trust me. Here you go. There's your opportunity. Bam. Make it happen. But something else that can help cure the frustration. And I'm sure Zay Flowers is not the only Ravens player that is frustrated, I'm sure. Zay Flowers is not the ra only Ravens offensive player that's frustrated by their usage. I'm sure because, I mean, call a spade a spade. Let's say what it is. I'm sure Rashad Bateman, he's somebody else that's frustrated by his lack of usage in this Ravens offense. I'm 20,000% 20, sure that he is uh, with Isaiah Likely. He may even be frustrated with his usage, at least this past week in the Raiders game in this Ravens offense. I'm sure he is. Derrick Henry could even be. Because they'll be Derrick Henry will get rolling. 
especially in this last game. And then after, whoa, whoa what? Where Derrick Henry go? A lot of fans be asking the same thing. So, and again, that's the tough part about offense because there's only one ball to go around. It's just one. So everybody ain't going to go off every single game. So I, I get that. And, and I know all of them get that as well. But the thing that makes things even more frustrating for the players, for the fans, for everybody, in my opinion, is when somebody is, they doing their thing. Somebody on offense, they out there killing it. They out there making play after play after play after play after play. And then it's like the Ravens just, poof, they forget about them. So that's something that needs to improve drastically. Don't forget about your playmakers because they're the ones that help you turn those losses into wins. And in my opinion, that can be the biggest cure for all the frustrations that's going around the Baltimore Ravens locker room right now. Just win. Now we've gotten to one of my favorite parts of these videos, and that's where we feature your questions. If you'd like to take part in it, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. We got way too many emails to give anybody passes to send it to the wrong email, so I'm, I can't do it. So we've got to send it to the correct email, teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can just send it directly on Patreon. Let's get to a Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy Martin. He said, do you think we should try Pat Ricard at right guard? He said, hey, man, we got to do something. My guy is desperate. He said, like, Ravens, something got to give. If the Baltimore Ravens are going to make a change, this is going to be the week. But if they don't, then it'll show that they're just stubborn. So I think this week for sure will tell us exactly what John Harbaugh is feeling like doing or not. Oh, wow. What timing, man. Y'all be y'all timing be so on point. Next question came from my guy, Keontae. He said, Raven, correct me if I'm wrong, but... Doesn't the offensive coordinator call offensive plays and the defensive coordinator calls defensive plays and the head coach just manages the game? Because if that's the case, is Munkin not the problem, LOL? The Henry usage is Munkin's game plan. The screen pass is Munkin's game plan. Why are we bashing Harbaugh? But a couple years ago, it was Wink's fault. The offense was stale. Fire Munkin. Keep Harbs. He is the culture of the Ravens. Ooh, whoa, this is a... This certainly took a turn of events right here. Um... The reason why people are saying fire Harbaugh is because those same complaints that you're saying about the offense, they were the same complaints. Uh, uh, even with Joe Flacco, there were a lot of complaints about the offense and the lack of consistency with the offense, uh, the, just the lack of scoring with the offense. It was those same complaints with Joe Flacco. But under Lamar Jackson, under Lamar Jackson era, Marty Morningweg, Ravens fans are like, oh my goodness, Marty Morningweg, get this guy out of here. He's terrible. So uh, Marty Morningweg, he, he resigned. He stepped down. Um, then Giro came in. Giro came in. Ravens got off to a hot start. Then Giro kind of like, it ain't get so good after that. Ravens were like, hey, get rid of Greg Roman. This guy is terrible. What's going on, man? Then Greg Roman, uh, his contract ran out or whatever. Ravens didn't pick up the option or whatever. I forgot how it happened. But anyway, Giro's gone. <laughs> then Todd Munkin came in. Todd Munkin came in. The Ravens offense started hot. Like, oh, yeah, let's go, baby. Come on. AFC Championship happened. And then these games happened. A lot of Ravens fans like, hey, Todd Munkin, what is going on with your offense? There's one common denominator in those equations. It's the same person that's been on the top of the Baltimore Ravens, or at the top of the Baltimore Ravens, excuse me. And that's John Harbaugh. Next question came from my guy, Jarvo. He said, I thought this season was supposed to be a revenge season and a dedication season for Jacoby Jones and Joe D. This team don't look good. I'm not giving up, but something has to be done. <laughs> a little more than just uh, a lot of different things got to be done. Let's see if the Baltimore Ravens do them. He also said, uh, in addition to what I said, it's time to let Hobbs go. Trade Marlowe so he can just do his podcast and maybe even trade Justin Tucker. Oh, my boy Jarvo would have fed up. He was tired after that game. He said, enough is enough. He said, get rid of the head coach. Let Marlon go do his podcast or get rid of him and get rid of Justin Tucker too. My goodness, Javo was ready to set it off. He also said, just go into the headliners and let me know what you think. Number one, it's time for new people in the front office. In some positions, yes. He said, number two, try to be patient with Bateman, and I still believe, but maybe it's time for a package deal to grab Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup, or maybe a DK Metcalf. Uh, well, not a Cooper Cup, because now he's on injury reserve. And uh, Devontae Adams, now y'all know how I feel about him. Well, DK Metcalf, DK Metcalf especially. I, I, I honestly feel like 
DK Metcalf would be an, an even better fit. Than, but you can't go wrong with either one, really. So I wouldn't be mad at either one. Uh, he said, number three, Todd has to do more RPOs and zones with the King and Lamar. Now, I did like how they did. They started to get Derrick Henry going. And it's like right when they started to get him going and got going more consistently, then they said, poof, okay, you're out of here. Uh, he said, number four, Zach got to let our defense fly and let Kyle and Trent loose. Trent Simpson played 100% of the snaps in that, in that game against the Raiders. So that's better, much better than last week. Um, he got to get a little better with matchups, though. And Kyle Hamilton, I think something going on with Kyle Hamilton. I think he's hurting. He got to be hurting because he ain't the same Kyle Hamilton right now. Number five, he said trade Marlowe and maybe even Stevens for better corners. Nobody's going to do that. They're not going to trade a corner for a corner, especially if they're better corners than Marlowe and Brandon Stevens. They're not going to trade and assume that Brandon Stevens and Marlon Humphrey are worse corners than what they're giving to you. They ain't going for that. And he said six, time to find Justin Tucker's replacement next draft. Oof. Mm. Well, oh, mm. <laughs> and number seven He said uh, start Ben Cleveland at right guard And Roger Rosen at right tackle I agree with those And he said eight Zay's frustrations remind me of Hollywood Oh good timing Because that's what we were just talking about earlier uh, He also said Watching Sip to Tally And two questions was asked That I would like to ask you If Lamar gets hurt because of this old line Who gets fired EDC or John Harbaugh mm. That would depend on Steve Bashotti. That would be on both of them, though. It would be on both Eric DaCosta and John Harbaugh. One, it would be on Eric DaCosta because he's the one that put this offensive line together. Two, it would be on John Harbaugh because he's the one that makes the decisions on the depth chart, who starts, who doesn't, and whatnot. So that would be on both of them. Oh, I don't even want to think about that. that just you reading that, seeing that, that, that made me really sad. I really, mm -mm. Uh, oh, it's, ah, that, that would be really, really bad. We hope that that doesn't even have to be a conversation, though. Um, he said, number two, is EDC at fault that his draft picks don't work out, or is it a coaching problem? That's definitely a mix of both. It's a mix of both. Um, EDC just makes the picks. He figures how they going to fit in with the team. And the coaching staff, they got to coach them up and develop them. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit of both. Um, he drafts the player. Now, you do want to make sure you draft somebody that you can – you see what they do in college. You see what they specialize in, and you want to bring that to your football team and find a way to make that fit in. Okay, good. Because I think the way that it should be, this is just my opinion. I ain't no coach or nothing like that. I think you, instead of trying to figure out how this person can fit in your scheme, well, that's what you got to do. But I think you got to, because there's some people that, I mean, there's some coaching staff, some GMs or whatnot, they'll take these players and they'll be like, all right, Let's put, we're going to put them in our scheme. I mean, obviously, you're going to put them in this scheme because you draft them on your team. But they don't take what those college players specialize in. They try to have them do something else that is not their specialty. It's not their forte. It's not what, they, what made them a beast in college like that. And I think that's so important to do for football players, for your football teams, because that changes everything. Everything. If you had this player that was super fast, oh my goodness, he ran a 4-2. He was the fastest person on the field in college. And you just had him blocking for you. He had him blocking. A wide receiver ran a 4-2, you just had him blocking for you, and that was it. That wouldn't be using his specialties the right way. And I know that's a bit extreme, but you get what I'm saying. It's important to use players' special abilities to the best of your ability. Uh, anyway, he also said, bonus question, is this why John always plays players? Oh, my gosh. I, I, ain't even, I ain't even read that last question before I answer the last question. That's crazy. He said, bonus question, is this why John always plays players out of their natural position? Uh, he said, Daniel Farlele is a tackle, not a guard. Wow. That's something right there. That, that's something right there that, that, And that says a whole lot The player I always think of Every time we had this conversation It's the same player It's Matt Elam So many people look at Matt Elam And say oh he was a bust He sucked He was this he that But they didn't play him At his right position He was a box safety He was more strong safety They played him at free safety Had him dropping back and do That wasn't what he did And what he specialized in In college And they wonder why he didn't work out You ain't play him right 
Don't panic, but next question came from my guy Mark JG. He said, What's up, Engraven? You know, I gotta check in with the family first and see how y'all are doing. We are doing great. Baltimore Ravens, on the other hand, I don't know about that. But anyway, he said, I was thinking Baltimore usually drops these games, but it's usually after a win or we lose games, we should win. But this happens too often as well. I wanted to follow up on your conversation video after the game. When is enough enough? I'm not in panic mode or ready to throw the season away. Matter of fact, I'm still very patient, but if something isn't done, it's just going to get ugly fast. For starters, I do agree with you too. I do not think the season is done. I do not think the Baltimore Ravens are wrap for the Baltimore Ravens. They're done. They can't do anything. That No, I don't think that. But I do agree. Something got to be done fast. Anyway, he said, um, if something isn't done, it's going to get ugly fast. For starters, you can have a weak link on the offensive line, but a whole side can't be a liability. You notice all of the rushing yards came from the left side. Uh, I was willing to give it time, but Falele is not it. It's like with a job. If someone is bad but giving effort and willing to willing things will eventually click but there's no progression if there's no progression why keep putting your employee in that same position it may hurt but it's okay to say you're lacking at your job i've been there either gotten better or found a suitable job your job is to put the best out there i'm glad i wasn't the only person that noticed roger was doing his thing with max crosby rosengarden needs a consistent guard by his side that can help him because if Philele is out there he is going to be exploited and lamar isn't going to stand for it oh man that's a really good point it's something that i haven't thought about uh uh, enough and that's whoever's next to roger rosengarden yeah we've been saying the same thing roger rosengarden needs to be out there but yeah the could because the uh the offensive line they're like a chain and if one of those links is weak then they'll just end up breaking apart anyway he said it's more than just the offensive line it starts and ends with Hobbs. he has an ego think about this air reed and ray lewis had that locker room you think Hobbs was gonna have his way no sir Ed and reed both have gold jackets and are gone now john can do as he pleases and he has you see he doesn't step in and tell zach or monk to do this or do that and if something goes wrong he pins it on the coordinators with his famous i don't get involved with them so john what is your job title i want change not necessarily a firing but something has got to give engraving it's not panic mode yet but if there's nothing done i fear our super bowl window will close due to insane mediocrity oh my goodness the way you put those two words together my goodness anyway he continuing he said i'm not worried about the defense because they called for mike's head early on but don't be afraid to deploy kyle hamilton because he's a baller like you say lol i think he's playing safe uh feeling out feeling things out still but i still make adjustments in his circle in circle this circles back to Hobbs. i like malik he's one of the few ravens i hope we drafted uh but he's a run stuffer and an edge setter and he's being exploited and it's not his fault he's He's not that guy yet that is very very true he shouldn't be out there covering people anyway uh, he said tucker is declining it's like your dog is sick and they were so loved all you can do is make them comfortable we are all human so don't be surprised on any misses anymore i give him maybe two more seasons at best before we have to put him down i love tucker but he is a human man you you're just lassie to, uh, justin tucker he said always love sexy draft picks but i want to see two big uglies with the first picks or even trade with a free agent investment with the offensive line because mark andrews cannot be extended offensive lineman making him not available to be a target i want a weapon at least at the deadline but i'd rather keep my qb from going six feet under first we got d d law and michael parsons shaking my head but i'm not i'm gonna i'm gonna end it with this for ravens fans don't let this team rob you of happiness because we can't control how they operate it's all right to be upset it's out of love but let's just regroup and try to r-e-l-a-x relax sorry i'm for all over the place novel but just wanted to get it off my chest before the media tears this in tears into this with no context and just like the offensive line i'm out Ooh, that was a uh, powerful one right there uh, and he also said i wanted to mention evolution the ravens never evolved with the times and Hobbs has been consistent with that the ravens have procrastinated in some areas that have come to cost us due to arrogance ego and negligence i'm cool with being run first but we are finding ourselves evolving to phase one or two uh, while the whole league is at phase three to four we are always behind just look at cute qbs and wide receivers it took them so long to pay lamar and get a wide receivers and they're still playing with wide receiver i love smash mouth football and a good defense but you gotta help your quarterback kc does it cincinnati does it philly does it miami does it and they ain't better than lamar jackson anyways i'm back like Vilele, and now hopefully i'm out like him too wow a Ravens car service. Next question came from my guy Joey. He said, in light of recent automobile incidents and a few members of the team experience, uh, is it in the best of interest uh, that the organization invests in a car or shuttle service of some kind? I'm sure they got something. And then, of course, there's always Uber, Lyft. There's always those. And then you could go to a taxi if you just ain't got the, the app on your phone. Anyway, he said, 
I know this is a goofy question. It's been a goofy season so far in the transportation aspect. <laughs> in a lot more aspects than that, it's been a goofy season for the Ravens. But I don't think that's a goofy uh, question at all. Because you're thinking about the player safety. That's it. So it ain't goofy. He said, hope all is well with you and yours. And keep the great videos coming. Sincerely, a Houston native who's been a Ravens fan since the McGahee days. Oh, shout out to Willis. But more importantly, shout out to you. Appreciate you. Next question came from my guy Reggie. He said, hey, Engraven, tackle Shakuma uh, Okafor was benched from the Patriots over something minor. He is a starting right tackle in this league. The Patriots have put him on their exempt list. Maybe we can convince them to trade him to us. Your thoughts? Oh, if it's something minor, I don't. Is it something minor? If they they don't bench them and put them on the exempt list, that that's a lot now. Hey, you, if, if they bench you, that's one thing. But if they put you on the exempt list, that's a whole nother. And and if he is starting quality, then he must have done something like really really bad to get on the exempt list. Because think about this: somebody who's starting quality is on the Baltimore Ravens right now. He's not starting. They starting somebody else over him who should be should not be starting over him, but. Even he's still on the team. And I think y'all know exactly who I'm talking about. Next question came from my guy, Jeezy. He said, Engraven fam, keep it going. All of the JK talking. Engraven fam, 25 games, total 1,300 yards over four years span. If he get hurt today, everyone will say we made the right decision. I'm currently watching a YouTube stream. I totally agree with Kamar being the perfect fit. He's my favorite running back in the league right now. He would be Ray Rice 2.0. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, with, with JK. No, Ravens even... We don't want J.K. Dobbins to get hurt at all. No, we do not want him to get hurt at all. But even with him being healthy, if he's healthy for the rest of his career, which hopefully he is because we want to see him continue to do stuff like that, just not against the Ravens. But if J.K. Dobbins is healthy for the rest of his career, Ravens did not make the wrong decision with not re-signing him. Because when he was on the Baltimore Ravens, he was always hurt. He was hurt so much. So he wanted to re-sign with the Ravens, but they obviously didn't want to re-sign him. They didn't re-sign him. And it was, it's just crazy how things went because I remember he went on the news, had that interview and whatnot. I said, oh, I want to resign with the Ravens, but they didn't want to resign. And it was all that. But then in the first game of the season, he got hurt and he was out for the rest of the year. And that was it. That was it for J.K. Dobbins. So, again, we hope that he continues to do his thing, whether it be with the Chargers or ends up being with somebody else. We want to see him succeed. Um, but Ravens did not make the wrong decision no matter what happens with J.K. moving forward. Next question came from my guy Aaron And thank you because I remember last time you sent it to the wrong email But that's okay, it's all good We got it right now He said, do the refs hate the Ravens? Why the referees called the King so many false starts If he moved his leg? Well, you can't move Especially at running back Like You, you, you can't move oh, Well, unless you get motion or something like that But anyway, he said that the face mask on, on Namdi Yeah, that one was That was bad Because Again, live, it looked like a face mask, but when they showed the replay, it was just all right here, and they still caught us. Oh, boy. And the pass interference on Brent, that was the worst. I think what made it the worst, too, was just with it being a spot foul, them gaining so many yards from it, the, the timing of it, it just, ah, it was just so, it was all kinds of bad, man. He said, man, these people hate us so much, in my opinion. I don't think many people would disagree with you. Time to tap in on Rashad Bateman. Next question came from my guy Gus. He said, I was seeing a lot of productive plays from Bateman, and I'm loving it. It still looks a little iffy on the chemistry with him and Lamar, but he's making plays not only this past week, but in week one, too. I think he's playing prove it ball in this season. If they can get that chemistry together, I think Bateman can be that Jacoby Jones type of receiver. Ooh, what do you mean by that? I don't see Jacoby Jones with Rashad Bateman. Not that that's a good or bad thing. I just, I just don't see Jacoby Jones with Rashad Bateman. Who I, would I compare him to, though? I, I really cannot think of who right now. Anyway, continue. He said, now time to discuss the two elephants in the room. Okay. Offensive line. Now, I know it's early in the season and the Ravens are wanting to play with fire with a young right side on the offensive line with the exception of Makari. But I still think we need to trade for a veteran. I don't know who, but I would rather be safe than sorry. Not Ravens, though. <laughs> Ravens say we risking it all, baby. They gamblers. Uh, and he also said Hobbs. Now, Hobbs is a tough conversation because as a Ravens fan, I feel like you got to love him as not only a coach, but as a person who's very colorful and almost, almost always in a good state of mind about everything. Is he the best coach uh, in the league? No. Has he made poor decisions in the past? Yes. But I don't think that's going to last too long this season because in the past, I've seen Hobbs get his stuff together quickly, if not in game. We're going to see. We're going to see. We're going to see, like, regular season. This is unfamiliar territory for the Ravens, man. 0-2, that, like, that's, again, it's not the end of the world. And what's crazy, my, uh, my ceiling for the Ravens uh, this year was 15-2. That was my ceiling for them. I said my floor was, uh, I think I said 12-5. and five. But <laughs> if they're going to reach that ceiling, like, you, you can't lose another game. <laughs> but I don't think they can reach that ceiling. 
Uh, anyway, he said, last thing, it's just a personal thing uh, to see what your thoughts will be in a scenario where the Ravens did end up parting ways with Hobbs. Who do you think is up next? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, he just said, in all honesty, I wouldn't mind a Bill Belichick, but I see us sticking with Hobbs. Yeah, I, I think most people see us sticking with John Harbaugh because I, I just feel like he's so safe. I feel like he's extremely safe. We'll, we'll see, though. We'll see how the things obviously play out. Go wait, wait and see. Um, but Bill Belichick. Hmm. I've been I've seen a lot of people say Bill Belichick. Uh, would he be able to get the most out of a Lamar Jackson, though? We know he's had all the success in the world and whatnot. But would he get the most out of a Lamar Jackson? Well, he did get the most out of Tom Brady. And Tom Brady is definitely not as skilled as Lamar Jackson. So there's the that thinking. But then I think of Bill Belichick, like, he's he's older. And um, not that age really got anything to do with it, but how would his thinking be? How would his ten- what would his tendencies be? How would he have this team? I feel like they would be very, very disciplined. I feel like they would be extremely disciplined. Um, so I don't know. I don't know about Bill Belichick. Cause I, again, I, what six Super Bowls he got? Uh, that's, a, that's a lot. So yeah, he's gonna have to win some games with with his team um, with a good defense. And the defense was a lot of reason that Tom Brady got a lot of them Super Bowls too. He of course did his part, but the defense they really, really, really did their part. But um, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I've been seeing a lot of people float that one around like a lot. Uh, and he also said, uh, "Hope you and the fam and team keep it clean." Oh, yeah. He hope you and the fam and team keep it clean. Having a great day. <laughs> And like Devontae Adams to the Raiders when midway through the season or next offseason, he ends up with the Ravens. I'm gone. Go Ravens. Appreciate you.